Thanks very much for attending. Um, I know it's just been lunch, so everyone's uh, ready and all fueled up, hopefully, for the rest of the day. Um, I feel really honored to be here today. Um, and yeah, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about what we've been doing at GraphBase for the last 18 months. Uh, I joined about a year ago and got, in, got into it um, at a time where we we're kind of figuring out what we want to do. And I'm, I'm going to go and talk about that um, throughout this. But everyone at GraphBase has a developer background, and we've always wanted to build something that has a really good developer experience and does local development first. Um, I'm Jamie. I create GraphQL content online, uh, weekly videos, and I'm changing the format uh, very soon to include a lot more people that are creating tools and services in the GraphQL space. So if anyone's interested in hopping on a live stream and sharing what you've got, um, I want to try and use the platform that I'm trying to build um, to share more of that. So it's not just about what I enjoy. Um, please let me know if there's any content we can all create and share together. Um, but yeah, you can find me on, on Twitter or X or 10 or whatever it's called. I'm Notrab, which is just Barton backwards. Everyone always asks, what is Notrab? So there, there's some, some useless information. Um, but yeah, when we first started building GraphBase, we started with this idea of building a GraphQL CRUD API, essentially built on top of DynamoDB. Um, but we soon realized that this trend of all of these tools, we use the right tool for the job, this trend was just growing. Everyone was picking individual tools to do well in one area. And as we can see here, we've got everything from GraphQL APIs, open APIs, even things like Shopify, headless CMS. We use all of these together in some way. Um, but all of these require us to install our own SDKs and interface with APIs all separately. Some of them have really, uh, you know, the, the documentation styles vary and the learning curve um, can differ between all of these. So this is what we are trying to do um, at GraphBase uh, is to improve that. Also, one thing that we face with all of these as well is we often have no choice where that data lives. It can live in a single region for all of the different vendors and they can be dotted all around the world. And if we have the option to upgrade and pay to put our data in different places, then we have that data again scattered all about when all of that data might not be in the same place. And even if we have that option to put our data across the world, it often costs per provider. We end up having to pay multiple regions, multiple providers, and that cost is, is uh, you know, it's just grown. Um, and that's not, that, that results in, I think, in a, in a, in a poor developer experience. Um, because when you make a request to the edge, your function or your API might be deployed at the edge, but it's gonna have to go make hops around the world to get the data wherever it lives. Um, and that's not great. So that's what we are focused on at GraphBase trying to solve. And I wanna show you a little bit about how we do that. And we'll go into some of the code a little bit later. Um, so we are deprecating our own database offering soon because we are really focused on allowing you to bring the data that you already have, no matter if that's a data API, database, or whatever, another API. We want to kind of bring all of that to the edge. So by using GraphBase, we're able to, um, you know, reduce the latency of all of the connected APIs. Right now, we work with a bit of edge caching to resolve this, but over time, we want to connect natively with all of the different databases to create a GraphQL API that we can then ingest data on the side and serve that at the edge so you're not making requests to wherever that be. Um, that is part of our kind of cloud offering uh, with, with by, you know, by enabling that, that's part of our cloud offering. So to get started with GraphBase, the idea is that you connect, um, you connect all of your different data sources using the SDK, no matter what that data source is. You open the SDK and you can define things in there um, to connect to data APIs, databases, et cetera. These connectors will integrate natively into each of the different databases. So if it's something like MongoDB or Neon with Postgres, you define a schema for that. And then from that, we can generate the APIs, create all of the query planning for that. So it's done um, as effective as possible um, without kind of creating a proxy in front of that or running functions with, with SDKs and things and going back to the problem we had at the very beginning. We want to absorb all of that so you interface with a single unified API for all of your data. And like, like we've seen before, there's dozens of services that you should be able to connect very, very easily with the SDK. And this is just an example um, of some of the different connectors that we have. Right now, um, yes, as of yesterday, we have a, th a fourth connector type, which is Postgres. Right now we support Neon. 
um, but we're gonna go into all of the different data sources to create native integrations. Um, so here we can see in the very top, we've got GraphQL, so we're able to proxy an existing GraphQL API, forward along any headers or set header contents in there to allow access, and then that's put in, that, that generates into the final output API. Then we've also got MongoDB as well on the left, and what actually we've got here is a model user with all of the different fields, and then we have the collection user which maps into MongoDB. And this generates a CRUD API on top of that, and we can map the different fields if they're named differently, um, but we want to kind of create this structured GraphQL API for something like Mongo that isn't so structured. And then the example on the right, we've got Open API because that's a specification. Thing, you know, other tools like GraphQL Mesh, we're able to kind of do the same similar thing where we can transform a Open API specification into GraphQL, uh, and we can handle the deployment of that to the edge. So once we've connected everything, we now move on to actually deploying what we've connected. We've created a schema for all of our different data sources, and then we can push this to GitHub or deploy it, and then that's deployed. There we go. So yeah, we have, uh, I mentioned earlier on that we are developer first. We wanna have a local experience for everyone that's working on the platform. You can run the entire thing locally. You don't need to create an account to get started, and you can just run MPX graph based to deploy to deploy your schema to the edge uh, with your account, obviously, once you've created it. But we heard from developers that, oh, I don't have any vendor lock-in here. I wanna be able to configure all of these schemas and create something and deploy that wherever I like, not to the graph-based platform. Well, earlier this week, we um, open-sourced the um, GraphQL engine that we have for GraphBase. So that's now fully open-sourced and available on GitHub. So if you wanna take all of what I've just said, you can deploy that wherever you like. And how that works is I skip back past the slide, but we deploy with GraphBase to the edge. The entire engine's built in Rust, and we compile it with WebAssembly and deploy it to the edge on the Cloudflare network. And that's an option if you don't want to handle all of that yourself, we can do that automatically as part of the, the SaaS offering that we have. But if you want to deploy that wherever you like, it's all open source so you can get started with that. So once we've connected, and we've deployed the API, of course, the next thing is to query. So again, this looks, you know, we're all familiar with this kind of thing, but here we've got three different data sources that we're making requests for. But what you might not notice in uh, these requests, things like the Stripe query that we have to fetch all of our customers, there's a field called Gravatar, and that Gravatar is a field that doesn't exist in Stripe. That's something that we've custom, we've created with custom code, and we're able to deploy that inside of that package that we deploy to the Cloudflare network when we bundle everything together. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in the code. I'm gonna make some dummy requests, um, and I'm gonna be using this tool that we, we are now releasing today, which is called Pathfinder, and this is what we think is the missing GraphQL IDE. From this, you can make all of your GraphQL queries and you can use any API that you like. This is in beta, so please test it out. Please let us know what you think of it and if there's any improvements that we can make. So I think we'll use Pathfinder and dive into a demo. Um, I was originally going to attempt to go through all of this within five minutes or so um, and deploy to the edge, but uh, the Wi-Fi is, uh, is a bit spotty today. So if we mirror the display, I should be able to show you the schema and a few examples. Great. Okay, so this is some of the code for the SDK. And to, to create this skeleton project that we have here, the schema file, inside of our existing front end application, all we need to do is run MPX graph base init, and then we can choose whether we want to configure this using the TypeScript SDK, or if we want to use something like SDL. And this graph base folder can live inside of your React, Svelte, Next, whatever application, front end application, even a mobile application project, you can create a folder using the CLI with graph base, and that's where you put all of your functions and the schema to configure all of that. So I'm just gonna kind of go through some of the examples here and run some queries to show you what that looks like. But here what we've got is a connector to MongoDB. And this is using the Atlas Data API right now. Uh, and then from, from that, we're able to attach different models. So here we have a user model, and we can do things like embedded documents as well by creating other types and reference and those. Once we've added all of the models, 
we can then go on to attaching that data source to the overall GraphQL schema. And then further on down, we can see here, we've got things like attaching the Mongo, uh, sorry, the Neon connector, using Neon here to connect to the Neon API. And then we're able to create all of the different models again on top of that. So we could have users in one API and maybe posts or something else in another. Um, and then we get all of that data in that unified API. Then further on down, we've got a connection using the GraphQL connector. And this is just a simple schema stitching approach where we fetch in the GraphQL API, um, and then we att attach that to the schema again. But what's interesting about this one is here we have this thing called unit, and I'm just defining a GraphQL enum here and giving it some values. This just creates the SDL. Uh, the, the SDK generates an SDL that we, we can push, and you can configure all of this using SDL as well if you don't want to use TypeScript. So what we have here is we're able to extend any of the types in our generated API. Here I'm just picking Contentful property, which is inside of the content, Contentful CMS. I've created something called property. And then on there, I'm able to extend that type with a custom field that I'm calling weather. That weather field then has some arguments, which returns a type. And then we can attach a resolver here. And this just mentions, this relates to a file that we have inside of that graph-based folder. So we don't need to point to an endpoint and add a latency there. This code can be run at the edge with that unified API as soon as we make the request. So if we open up that file, we can see here, it's very basic, but what this is essentially doing is from the root, it's just fetching the location, and then we're able to call out to an API to get the actual weather uh, and then return that data. This is written in TypeScript. It can be written in JavaScript. Soon we're gonna allow other languages as well um, to, to, to uh, resolve those fields that you want to extend. And then like other tools, using the open API spec and the open API, API connector, we're able to connect something like Stripe, which doesn't have a GraphQL API, but we're able to generate a GraphQL API from it. And then again, similar to what we did with Contentful, we're able to extend something like the Stripe customer and add a field on there with some arguments that calls out to a resolver file that I've written inside of my project. So we can see here on the right inside of my project, all of these files and the resolvers live here and all of these run alongside when you make an API request. It's not having to go and make any fetch requests anywhere else. So again, this is just some code to make this work. It, it could, could probably be improved, but you can, you can install dependencies here as well that are edge compatible uh, to generate and return the data that you need. And then further on down very quickly, I just wanted to show that we can also do things that you might do with something like GraphQL Yoga or Apollo Server or Mucurus or um, any other thing outside of the JavaScript ecosystem. You can create a GraphQL server and create the, you know, the, all of the usual queries and mutations that we're accustomed to. Uh, and again, that just looks a little bit like it did above where we have a query arguments, it returns a field, a value, um, et cetera. So again, very simple resolver format. We are working on, the TypeScript with the TypeScript SDK generating the types for these resolvers. So you've got full type safety in there. And then we also are working on the client side as well. So you can use the SDK to generate and query and all of that will be type safe end to end. And again, we've got, we've got the uh, mutation in there as well. Uh, and then very lastly, we can export that configuration, the schema, and then we can attach on things like auth rules. We work with different auth providers as well. So if you have something like Open ID Connect or JWT or you, whatever you use, you can use the tokens generated there to allow, you know, grant access to the GraphBase API that we expose. Um, and you can attach to each of the types as well, whether that field is accessible or not. And you can do things like group and RBAC with that in there as well for each of the types. Then very lastly, we also have GraphQL edge caching. So you can cache expensive fields where we make requests to weather API to get the weather. We might not want to do that on every request when users refresh the page. We're able to cache things like that as part of the configuration globally or um, when, we, when we are defining the type as well, we're able to attach uh, things in here as well to cache that. So I'm just gonna nip over to Pathfinder very quickly. And here we're able to make a GraphQL mutation. This is going to MongoDB, it's returning the data. And then we're able to make a query to get that data back from Mongo. And this is qu qu 
this is doing all of the query planning, making the most effective uh, queries to Mongo, um, and then it's caching that response as well for the next user. We can also configure things like SWR, so we're not having to make round trips, um, and that data can be, can be updated in the background. Again, here we are just fetching some data from Contentful, but you, we can see here the value actually changed before I started talking. I ran the query, and we can see that value is just updated because it's made a request to that API using that custom resolver. And then again, very lastly, when we make a query to Stripe and get all of our customers, that Gravatar field doesn't exist from Stripe, but we're able to use that email field to generate something to return the response from the Gravatar field. And then very lastly, we have things like the GraphQL query that we added to the schema. Very boring stuff, but uh, you know, that's, we're all very familiar with queries and mutations. We're able to make those same things and configure those and deploy that automatically. But yeah, that's all that I have and I wanted to share with you.